Hi, and welcome to the directions for Word, Module 3, Tab Exercises. So I have four pages working with tabs. So I'm just going to put the show hide on just to show you that tab has been pressed for each of these. And then we're just going to set them at different locations because especially here, they're too close or too far away from each other. So um, you can turn off the show hide and you notice the titles are in the center. I do want the ruler on, so I'm going to click view and then check ruler so that the horizontal ruler is showing and so is the vertical. So there's a couple ways to set tabs. The first thing I'm going to do is select the, the section that I want to set tabs. So it's all the zip codes, so I'll select those. And what I can do is just use the horizontal ruler and set a tab, uh, as long as it's um, a tab that um, it's in an easy location. For example, over here is your tab indicator, and if you hover over it, it's placed at the left tab, which is the devo default tab. If you click it, it'll change. This one is a center tab, and this one is your right tab, and this is a decimal tab and then you have a bar tab, I'll explain that one later. And then you have your first line indent, your hanging indent, and then it goes back to left tab. So I'll leave it there. On the ruler, I'm going to the two inch marker and I'm just gonna left click and it puts a tab in there. And you can see everything's been, because there was a tab key already pressed, everything moved to the two inch marker. Now for this, I'll set it at four, four inches, and it moves to a perfect location. So it's aligned a lot nicer center of the page. Now what's nice about this is if you wanted to move it, you could just hold that tab and drag it, and everything moves to your new location, but I'll keep it at four. So it's at two inch and four inch. And then just click to deselect. So if I was right here and wanted to do one more city, I would press enter and then you have to follow by tab and then type um, what your location. So the next one, we're gonna set new tabs because it's uh, a new table. So I'm gonna select the area and I can do the same thing where I set um, the tabs, but I'm going to, instead of setting them here, I'm gonna to go to a different place to set them and I'll explain when I get there. To do that, click the paragraph dialog box launcher, and then down at the bottom, choose tabs. And in here, I'm gonna set three tabs. The first one I'm gonna set is 1.2, and then it's going to be a left tab with no leaders. So I'll click set, and it goes into the box. Now, because it's in blue, I don't have to press delete. I can type right over it. So I'll type 3.4, and then I'll click bar, set, and then it's in there. And then one more, 5.5, and that will be a right tab and set. So if you ever want to see if these are accurate, you would click that each one. So that one was 1.2, left and none. This was bar at 3.4, and 5.5 was right and none. And then I'll click OK. So this is, you can see that this is the tab at 1.2, and this is a right tab. Notice it's a different um, facing way. It's a right tab, and that was at 5.5. And then this is your bar tab. So it separates the two columns, a bar tab. All right now we'll move on to page two, and I'll select. Now this one will have three tabs, and we're also going to do something else in between it. So it's like um, a table of contents where it has dots between each of the tab sections so that your eye can follow across easily. So you could also right click and choose paragraph. You still get that same dialog box. Click tabs. And in here we'll have three new tabs. One will be at one inch and it's a left tab. So that's good, click set. But before I, before I click set, I should have I'm going to select it right here. I also want to set three for leaders, which are like dashes. Now click set, so it goes right over it. The next one is three, and I'll choose, keep it at left, 
but choose dashes and set. And the next one, five inch. And that one will be dashes also. So all three of them should be dashes. So if I check the tab at one inch is left in three, three inch is at left in three, and five is left in three, and then click OK. Now if you notice, maybe we shouldn't have had a tab at the, at the first tab set because you don't want the, the dashes there. So go right back into your tab area, select that first one, and you don't want dashes. Choose none, and then set. And if you want to double check, three still has the dashes, and five still has the dashes. Now click OK. So it takes it off the first one, but you want it on the other two. And the last tab set here, we are going to um, select the text, but what we want to do is line up the tab, a left tab, and then the decimal. So all the decimals line up. So again, I'll go into the dialog box launcher for paragraph, tabs. There's going to be two here, 1.5, set because I don't want to put leaders because it would come before it, so set. And the next one is at five, and it's going to be a decimal, so all the decimals line up. And I'm going to use the dots instead, so I'll choose leader two, and then click set. If I double check, 1.5 is left and none, and five is decimal and two, and then OK. You have the leaders that go across, easy for your eye to follow, and then all the decimals line up. So now we'll continue to page three. So this was originally set with tabs. So if I, I com come in here, I can see that there's, this is at the left margin, it's in a little bit, um, and it's just under two and a half, um, like three and a quarter, five and a quarter. They're already set in there. What I'm going to do is, um, instead of using tabs, is convert it to a table. So select all of the items and then choose insert, table, convert text to table, and right now it's showing four columns and 12 rows because tabs is selected. So if you saw one column, because there's not one, there's four, make sure you select tabs. And then go ahead and click OK. So you've put it into a table now. A, a few things that we can change, uh, for example, this um, column here for the per night, and then I'm going to hold control and then select total stay. Because I want the decimals lined up, I'm going to click the table tools layout tab and I'm going to choose right align. So I'm just going to do it one at a time. Now it's letting me do it. So select, hold control, select, and I'm going to choose right align. I guess it's, you need to do it separately, so I'll do one and then the other one. In the middle, I'll use center, center line. So now, um, not only can we put it into a table, but Word can actually do calculations. So what we want to do is take the per night and multiply it by the total nights to get a fee. So in table layout, there's actually, so make sure you're in the first one under total stay, choose formula. And in here, the only thing we want to do is instead of sum, change it to the word product. And it's okay if it's lowercase. And it's going to take the product of everything to the left of it. And then for the number format, I'm just going to click the down arrow and choose the longest item because it'll show anything that's in dollar sign, commas, and decimals in two places. And then click OK. So then you have the total fee. Now it will remember this, this um, function if you just press the down arrow and press F4. And if F4 doesn't work, let me just go back up here. I'm just going to go back into formula. It says left, long formula. I'm going to come down and instead of um, F4. Up here with the redo is also a repeat key. So I'm just going to click that. And then also I noticed the repeat key shortcut is Control Y. So just make sure down arrow, Control Y, 
down arrow, control Y, and just keep going. It's doing all of the calculations per night times seven nights. Now I need totals. So I'm going to click in the first per night column and go into formula, and it should automatically have equals sum above, which is exactly what we want. I just want to put in the formatting and OK. Click over here, control Y. Y. Sometimes it doesn't do the control Y, so I'm just going to go back in here. It should say sum above. I'm not going to put any formatting because I don't want a dollar sign. I just want a total nights. And then one more. Formula, sum above, and formatting. And there you have it. So another thing you could do is if maybe you wanted to have the resorts in alphabetic order. So there is an extra line at the top that has column headings, and then there's the total row. So I need to select what I want in alphabetic order. So I just hover, point, and drag down. And then there's actual sort. So I'm going to choose sort. And I want it to sort by column one. This is column one. And it'll sort the text in ascending order and click OK. That way it doesn't put the R and the T in alphabetic order, just the resorts. And the next page. Again, this was set by tab. So if we look at our tabs here in the ruler, and I just, as long as you click in one of them, you'll see the tabs. But we decide, you know what, we would rather put it in, um, in a table. So select all of your information, insert, table, and convert text to table. And you'll notice it says four columns, 11, so it's already selected at tabs. If it wasn't, you'd notice it's just one column, and OK. Now, it made them smaller, so if you wanted to, you could go to Layout and change the height so that it's not as um, small. And then what you could also do is, um, right now, the default is in the upper left corner. You could choose this one here, which is a line center left. And what we could also do, I'll do the same thing for the title. You could also center the title vertically. You could put it in order by either cycle, the, the name of the ride or the height of the ride. So again, um, we don't have to actually select the table. What you can do is go to sort. And what you would make sure is that um, the, you, my list has a header row, so it'll leave that alone. It won't be part of the sorting. And you would tell it to sort by ride. So it left ride alone up there, but it put the, the names of them in order alphabetically. So if we were to just look at this now as um, a one page document, You'll notice that everything is at the top of every page because that's the default setting. So if you wanted to, you could go into Layout, Page Setup, and under the tab Layout, Vertical, assign, um, vertical Alignment, Center, and OK, and all of the pages are centered vertically. So we can view that multiple pages, and you should have four pages of tabs, and the um, new feature of calculating within Word. That's a save and submit. Thank you.